I'm Sally Greenberg, Executive Director of the National Consumers League, and um, I'm delighted to see everybody here this morning. Uh, we're here today, of course, because we're all concerned about the complex and very costly problem of medication adherence. Patients not taking their medications as directed. The National Consumers League is the country's oldest consumer advocacy organization. We've been at this since 1899, so this is our 112th year. <coughs> so today, the National Consumers League is releasing a briefing paper with Duke University Medical Center that confirms what many in healthcare have long suspected. Poor adherence leads to, an in to increased illness, more hospital stays, and even death. And it also, of course, results in many avoidable health care costs. 75% of Americans don't take their medications as directed, and that can cause serious consequences. And that's really why I'm really pleased to be a part of this campaign. Prevention is the foundation of our public health system, and prevention is the foundation of my work as Surgeon General. And our national challenge is to prevent poor health outcomes and to become a healthier and fit nation. We know that in the United States approximately 125,000 deaths occur every year because they're linked to patients not taking their medication as directed. And one-third of the medication related hospitalizations could have been prevented if patients would adhere to their clinicians instructions. So as the previous panelists have clearly laid out, non-adherence can lead to serious health consequences. It also puts an enormous burden on the nation's health care system. Cost estimates of non-adherence range anywhere from $100 billion to $300 billion per year, including additional costs for medicines, emergency room visits, hospital admissions, and also additional health care provider visits. But these human and economic costs are largely avoidable. It is estimated that for every additional dollar spent on adhering to a prescribed medication, medical costs could be reduced by $7 for patients with diabetes, $5.10 for people with high blood pressure, and $3.98 for people, excuse, I got that mixed up, $5.10 for people with high cholesterol, and $3.98 for people with high blood pressure. So raising awareness and encouraging conversations about the importance of taking medications as directed is really the first step to actually improving adherence. So one of the unique things about the Script Your Future campaign is its emphasis on all healthcare providers as being part of the solution. Pharmacists, doctors, nurses, nurse practitioners, and others all have a role to play in helping patients better adhere to their medicines. As a practicing pharmacist, my profession is in an exceptional frontline position to confront this issue. Research by the campaign and others have shown that pharmacists are among the most trusted patient resources for information about their medicines. We can help patients understand about and under anticipate side effects that might prevent them from actually taking their medications. We can also help debunk myths related to medications and answer questions that they might have forgotten to ask their physician during their visit. We can also help them to identify tools that, might, that will help them make taking their medication a priority. In my role as a pharmacist, I often work with people who have problems taking their medications. And one, one aspect of um, non-adherence is we often think of it as simply a patient forgetting to take a few doses of their medicines. However, there can be lots of reasons why patients don't, uh, not, are not adherent to their medicines. So in my practice, I conduct medication therapy management reviews where I ask patients to bring in all their medications and I have a conversation with my patients about those particular medications. I ask a series of questions during this conversation, including what is the name of your medication? What is it for? How do you take it? And what to expect from that particular medication? And that can include what are the benefits and also what are the side effects that, the, that might occur. Unfortunately, as you guys might know, that a lot of my patients aren't able to answer all those those questions, so it's really important that we address them. So one patient that came to mind when I was conducting a uh, medication therapy management review was a patient that was actually prescribed two different cholesterol medications within the same class. 
uh, by two different prescribers. So when I conversed with the patient, I asked them, you know, which medication were they actually taking? She said that she actually wasn't taking any of the medications because she was confused about which one to take. She didn't quite know who to talk to. So I worked with the patient, we communicated with the prescribers, and ultimately determined which proper medication she was actually supposed to take. So this is a situation that could have ended up in an adverse event if she had actually decided to go ahead and take the two medications as prescribed. And in this situation, it was a lack of therapy, which is also a definition of non-adherence as well. So through this simple conversation, I was able to assist one more patient become adherent to their treatment regimen. And sometimes, really, a conversation is all it takes. So in addition to helping patients in the pharmacy setting, the thing I'm really most excited about with the Script Your Future campaign is how it's seeking to engage future generations of healthcare professionals. I was really excited to see the group of student pharmacists from both University of Maryland School of Pharmacy and Howard University. If you see them, they're all the ones in the orange t-shirts in the audience. Thank you, guys. Um, <laughs> they were outside uh, talking to patients, as, uh, persons as they came off the metro and encouraging them to take the campaign pledge. As a professor of pharmacy, I know that one of the best hopes that we have for changing our culture of non-adherence is by training our future healthcare professionals to be as proactive as possible about engaging their patients in conversations about their medications. As a faculty member, one of the courses that I work with is a course where student pharmacists are paired with members of their community. And the goal of the course is to actually have students interact and improve their communication skills with patients and also um, their documentation skills. So one of the visits that I supervise that the students actually have to take a medication history. So they learn to have that conversation with the patient. Another component of that is that they also are able to address any medication adherence issues. So one of the ways that I teach my students how to ask that adherence question instead of, you don't miss any medications, do you? You know what kind of answer you get from that. I teach them to ask, when you miss a, uh, when you miss a medication, which medication is it? And what do you think keeps you from taking that medication as directed? Asking the question in that particular way puts the onus on the patient to determine what are the barriers from them keeping to, um, from taking their medication as, as directed. And as a pharmacist, I can create a patient-centered approach uh, and a strategy to help them overcome that particular barrier. So, uh, so we conducted a systematic review of interventions that are aimed at improving uh, adherence to cardiovascular and diabetes medications. And we broke down those interventions by the mode of delivery, the person who pervade the, the intervention, the information to patients, and compared them, and found that the most effective communicator in the studies that have been published to date was the pharmacist, the retail pharmacist at the point of the retail pharmacy. Nurses at the point of hospital discharge were relatively effective. Uh, retail pharmacists in the physician's clinic were less effective. Physicians were the least effective <laughs> in the studies that we looked at. But retail pharmacists are, are uniquely positioned in that, that a, a, they have real expertise about the specific uh, good that's being purchased at that moment. There's a lot less complexity of all the other you know, pieces of information that are being thrown around. <coughs> They're a trusted source of information. And there's time. So, uh, so there's really an opportunity for pharmacists to play a bigger and more substantial and more central role in encouraging patients to adhere to their medications.